post exploitation is a part of the workflow where the attacker achieves the full value of the attack. Once a system has been compromised, the attacker generally performs the following activities. He or she conducts a rapid assessment to characterize the local environment like infrastructure, connectivity, accounts, presence of target files and applications that can facilitate further attacks, locates and copies or modifies target files of interest, such as data files or financial information, etc. Creates additional accounts and modifies the system to support post-exploitation activities. Attempts to vertically escalate the privilege level by capturing administrator or system level credentials. Attempts to attack other data systems. That is called horizontal escalation. By pivoting the attack through the compromised system to the remainder of the network. Installs persistent backdoors and covert channels to retain control and have secure communications with the compromised system. In fact, we are going to see the persistence in a future demo. And finally, the attacker removes indications of the attack from the compromised system. To be successful, the post-exploit activities require comprehensive knowledge of the target's operating system and file structure to ensure that protective controls can be bypassed. Let's see it in action. We have already exploited the system in the previous demo. So we will put the session in the background with the command control Z. Type yes to confirm and we're back. It is necessary to know the session ID for the post exploitation module that we are going to use. This can be obtained with the session comment. As we can see, the ID for our session is one. One of the first modules that we are going to try is the hash dump, which it will try to collect the password hashes of the system. The only setting that we need to insert is the session ID, which we have just saw, right? Before I proceed, I assume that you already watched the previous demo of the exploitation in order to understand the comment that I'm going to use in this example. Another useful module is the check VM, which it will try to discover if the system is a virtual machine. Same for this module. We need to set the session ID in the options section. Check this out. It appears that our system is a virtual box virtual machine. Accurate results. Another very interesting post exploitation module of Metasploit is the enum underscore configs, which it will obtain all the important configuration files and will store them in our system. We can see in the output a sample of the configuration files that has been obtained from the remote system. Now, if we want to check one of these TXT files by using a text editor application, copy one of your choice open a new console and use the nano application to see its contents. Good findings, Metasploit. Let's close it and go back to our main window. This time, 
we will enumerate the network configurations with the enum underscore network module. Same as before, the enum network command saved all the findings in text files so we can check them out later if we want to discover what kind of installations exist on the remote system like IDS, antivirus, firewalls, then we can use the enum protections module. We haven't finished yet. We can also enumerate the entire system by obtaining information regarding the user accounts, the installed packages, the services, the hard disk, the Linux version, etc. To get all this interesting information, we use the enum system command. I will leave the fun for you to check out the contents of these generated text files. In our final module, we will discover information from the user history. Of course, there is a Metasploit module for this as well, that it will store this kind of information on our local system. And it's called Enum Users History. Check this out. More findings stored in text files. I love Metasploit.